Thank you for joining us at World to Come Ministries, where we will be looking at Bible readings, Bible studies, and looking forward to the world to come. Hello, and welcome to World to Come Ministries. I hope you're enjoying this uh, series on the story of Elijah. We are going to bring this to a close by talking about um, 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah is on a high note. He just took care of the prophets of Baal. He brought water to the land that had been without it for so long. And now we see in chapter 19 that Jezebel is kind of a little angry at Elijah for killing all the prophets of Baal. So let's take a look at verse uh, 19 verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So how would you like to get that news? I mean... Elijah does this miracle work, brings people back to God, destroys the prophets of Baal, and then he gets his little, I'm going to kill you. I mean, I don't think people would enjoy that much. I wouldn't enjoy that much. Let's see what Elijah does. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. So, if you're like me, that's not the reaction you expected out of Elijah. I mean, he did miraculous things. He brought the widow's woman's son back to life. God allowed him to do a lot of things. And the first thing he says is, she's going to kill me? Run! I mean, I was a little disappointed in this story at this point because. He's trusted God with everything. God said, go sit by this brook. And he's like, yes, sir, I'm there. He said, go to this widow woman. Yes, I'm there. But he doesn't even consider God when he gets that note. Let's continue. Verse 5. And as he laid and slept under the juniper tree, began there an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake, bacon on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head, and he did eat and drink and lay him down again. So God sent an angel just to feed him. And water him, and then God let him go back to sleep. I mean, God provided for him when Elijah didn't think of God. God thought of Elijah. Verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meal forty days and forty nights unto Horab, the mount of God. That must have been some great meal. I mean, it sustained him for forty days and forty nights from one meal. I mean, God is providing, even in the midst of... Elijah's fears and 
he just wants to die, God is still providing for Elijah. Verse 9, And he came hither unto a cave, and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doesn't, what doest here, Elijah? So God says, Why are you here? Let's see, let's see his response. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thine prophets with the sword. And I, even I, am only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So basically, Elijah says, hey, I'm the only one. I've, I've been zealous unto you. I've, and I'm the only one left. We all know that ain't true, but let's see what God has to say on the matter. Verse 11, And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountain and brake in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? So God really wanted to get his attention. I mean, he really wanted to get Elijah's attention. And they asked him again, What are you doing here? Let's look at verse 14. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, threw down thy altars, sustained thy prophets with the sword, and even I am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So he said pretty much the same thing. I'm the only one, they want to kill me. Why I'm here. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thy comest, anoint Hazel, the king over Syria, and Juha, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shiphat, obey. Bel Mila, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And I'm sorry, I'm not good at names. I've said that before in this series. But God says, get up and follow me. Do what I command thee. Verse 17, and it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Juha slay, and him that escapeth from the sword, Juha shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So God says, You're not the only one. I mean, how many times in our life? Have we been in that crossroads and we kneel down and we say, God, take me. I mean, I've gone through some struggles in my life and there, it is, to me, not being here is an easy path. But God says you're not alone and we are not alone. So now we're looking... At verse 19, we're going to see Elijah's um, replacement, his trainee of sorts that 
God told him to train up. So verse 19, So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So that includes our series on the story of Elijah. There's a lot more things that we can talk about, and we will probably talk about that in future series. But I like this story. He does amazing work for God. But even like us, he had his doubts. He had his fears. And he went to the wilderness and hid. But God found him there. And if God can find him in the wilderness, he can find us no matter where our struggles are. And he will save us. Have a great day. And I hope you enjoyed our series.